innocent app you downloaded on your smartphone may be spying on you. All it takes is a swipe, and some of your personal data could be in the hands of a stranger. Anchor Sella Kim looks at how your privacy can be compromised and how you can protect yourself. Like many folks, Laurie Marshall never gave cybersecurity much thought until now. It definitely is scary um, just to think that somebody from wherever they are at can access my camera, my pictures, my contacts, or just anything in my phone. And they can, says app developer Neil Suss, often thanks to some savvy, even sneaky marketing. Typically, the payoff comes as a sale and added revenue for a company. But it's mainly so they can target their customers better. The more they know about you, you know, the more they can tailor their products toward you. But cybersecurity firm Snoopwall alleges the information can sometimes be used for much more. One app that has come under scrutiny is the Flashlight app. Easily found in the Google Play Store and very popular with Android users, Snoopwall's CEO Gary Malevsky claims the app gathers data from your smartphone and sends it overseas. I've tracked down those countries and we've tested the traffic on some of these flashlight apps that I consider creepware, and we have seen them go to other countries. He urges smartphone owners to think about it. The app asks for permissions that have nothing to do with the function of a flashlight. This privacy policy is it says I'm going to geolocate you, I'm collecting information, including your name, contacts, phone numbers, and other information on your phone. So if you hit accept to this very, very, very long privacy policy, then you're giving them permission to collect a lot of data on you. Marshall never reads the privacy policy because she says, frankly, they're too long and hard to comprehend. I mean, I just accept everything because I'm not going to go through and read it. But experts say you should because you may not realize you're actually giving strangers permission to collect some sensitive and private information. They may be saying without, you know, in this big blob of verbiage, yeah, we're going to not only be tracking your location, but we can share it for marketing purposes or we can track you, you know, in the background. In fact, one flashlight app company, Golden Shores Technologies, was investigated by the Federal Trade Commission in 2013 for allegedly transmitting users' geolocation data to third party vendors without adequately informing them about it. The company eventually reached a settlement over the issue. I asked the FTC who the third party vendor was, and a spokesperson told told me, quote, we cannot deny or confirm it was a spy, but it was a separate issue. Neil says bottom line, it's up to the user to stay vigilant when downloading apps. He suggests disabling your GPS and Bluetooth when not in use, unless of course you want a specific app to notify you of discounts or sales. Read through the terms before downloading apps so you know what you're agreeing to. And if you've already installed some suspicious apps, uninstall them. He says keep in mind, we live in a vulnerable era where private information can easily be leaked with the touch of a screen. Kind of just realizing that, you know, very little is really private and even treating, you know, what is supposedly private as something that could, in theory, be leaked. So the cybersecurity firm Snoopwall claims the pre-installed iPhone flashlight app seems to be safe. He says this applies mainly for Android users, but Apple users, of course, should be, be careful, too. And I've reached out to Golden Shores Technologies several times, but they have not responded to my email, Scott. So, Sel, are there any other apps people should be a little leery about? Yeah, there are a lot of apps that collect information for marketing purposes, of course. And it's hard to say whether it is because of spying or not, because the FTC and FBI can't really comment on apps that are currently under investigation, but if you go to some websites like privacygrade.org, there's a list of apps with privacy grades. A team of researchers at Carnegie Mellon scoped out some of the apps for you. They did their homework for you, and uh, they kind of put grades on these apps that seem questionable. So go to our website at WDSU.com. We have a link to that website and a host of other websites that may shed some light on this issue. But of course, as always, it's up to the consumer. You have to read thoroughly through those privacy policies and yeah. terms before you download any apps on your smartphone. Good advice. Thank you, Stella. You're welcome.